everybody, it's Captain Kyle, and I'm here with the power of the Prime Spreader King. I've actually had this a while, and I was planning on doing something very elaborate, going through the original Predacons versus these guys, but I've used the original Predacons in some other videos, and at this point, I just want to break this out, set them up, and uh, have fun with them. So I am going to open them up, go through the set of five, the dive bomb, the headstrung, the rampage, the razor claw, the torox? Torox? Seriously? Tantrum. And if you don't have the set, this might inspire you. Try to get one for your collection. Be right back. All right, so I'm gonna open this guy up. He is too large for my close-up camera to show, but it is a nice box, has a nice picture of Predaking on it. And if you look at the back, it's got Predaking in his merged form, shows all the separate guys over here. So let's see what's inside. Now, we do have some various uh, things on the back here, along with a nice poster of Predaking. We'll put that over there. We have the instructions and stickers. Oh joy. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a sticker shock and do all these guys or if I should just do it on my own. But looking in the package, you can see we got all the five Predacons and they look very similar in size to the originals. So this is gonna be kind of cool. And he's supposed to be like 18 inches tall. This was considered, I believe, a Titan. And I will say this, he's got a lot of plastics pieces holding these guys in, even some paper ties. All right, so in the package we have Razor Claw, the leader, Rampage, never sure if he was a tiger or a puma, Dive Bomb, who I think was the first of the original Predacons that I got, Headstrong, and they're calling him apparently Torox, but I will just call him Tantrum. I don't know why they wouldn't call him Tantrum and not Torox. Is there somebody with that name or the parents say, Tantrum, that just sounds like something my kid shouldn't do. I mean, I am all for sensitivity, but there are some things that, I mean, in the case of Slag, in the case of Torox, Tantrum. No, you shouldn't. He also comes with these gun slash feet, which will be handy. Well, actually these will be handy because we have the hands of Predicate. We also have these other accessories, which I'm sure will have uses. So I will put those aside and refer to the instructions for them, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Now I do notice there's a lack of swords and I'm not sure if everyone's gonna have a gun. I'm sure there are some upgrade kits out there I could probably get a set of swords. I may look into that. And if I do, I'll do a follow-up video just to, to show them with all their weapons. But we're gonna start with Razor Claw. So there he is. He looks much more like the lion that appeared on the show. Though whether he can climb up walls. Well, did you get bit by a spider in the Peruvian Amazon? Can you see the future? I just watched the movie. It wasn't horrible, but really it wasn't, wasn't that good. And it kind of irritates me that most female superhero movies they can't just have like one female superhero like harley quinn and the birds of prey they had to be like four of them and in this there had to be like four come on women can carry a movie i mean wonder woman did fine come on but all right so looking at razor claw i'm gonna just take a peek in here to see if there are any additional things that would go on him and he's got the two guns here which are pretty similar to those that were shown in the cartoon, as I recall. I haven't seen the cartoon in a little while, but I, I think it's about time for a rewatch. So let's see, in his lion mode, his mouth does open, so that's kind of cool. His front legs don't really move that freely. I mean, back and to standing position, so he can't really slice and dice with his claws. The back legs kind of move like this. And I'm noticing that unlike the original, he does not seem to have a tail. And it's not showing me where to attach a tail. So, but it is showing me a lot of fucking stickers. Damn. I may or may not put them on. We'll see. But all right, so there he is. I'm gonna show you one last view of him on the turntable so you can see him from all angles. He does have some stickers already put on him. But let's get him into his bot mode. So there is Razor Claw in his bot mode with his rather unwieldy weapon and no sword, which again, a shame about the swords, but I'm sure there's something out there for me. We're gonna take the weapon off just so again, you can see him from the angle. He doesn't have too much kibble. Nicely, the uh, two of the legs kind of go inside his regular robot legs and the other ones become his arms. So not bad. And he's got the shoulder cannons, though he's gotta kind of like bend his shoulder forward to fire them at anybody. So that's not the best 
and most ideal situation. But all right, let's check out some posability. He does have ankle swivels, which is nice. So he can be in a nice wide pose. And he can't do really a full toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme. He can do a split that almost gets him down there. Actually, you can push him down and there he goes. Nice split, but not a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. Now I'm noticing that he's got these kind of hip covers. If you move them out of the way, he can kick forward about so, back about so, good sidekick. He can bend at the knee, though it's not a full 90 degrees. He's kind of constrained there. And uh, he does have full swivel through the hips. So that is not bad on that end. Gonna move those down. Does he twist at the waist? He does not. Probably uh, due to the whole merging thing. Arms can go all the way around. Can bend at the elbow. Can he swivel? There appears, yes, it was just a little stiff. He does have a swivel. So you can swivel the arms back and forth. Get your head back up. You can move his arms out to the side. So a good amount of articulation there. Even kind of put his shoulders back a little bit if you wanted to. Don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Head turns all the way around and we can close that lion mouth. So a pretty cool version of Razor Claw. And he's got this big ass weapon. Shame about the sword. All right, we'll put him aside for the moment. Let's take a look at Dive Bomb. Why Dive Bomb? Because Dive Bomb was the first of the Predacons that I purchased way back in the 80s, so that's what we're doing. So his wings can extend, so he can be in flight. His head, go from forward to open like that, and his beak actually opens, but when you open it too far, there's a face in there. So I wanna not open it too far. He's got these uh, talons feet there, so that's very similar to the original. But other than that, there's not a heck of a lot. He doesn't have the tail that the original one had, unless, nope, I'm not seeing anything to flip this back into a tail. So a decent representation. He's got some nice Decepticon symbols on his wings. But there he is with his full wingspan going around and around. Oh, I didn't measure uh, Razor Claw. Razor Claw is about seven and a half inches. The wingspan on Dive Bomb is a good 15 inches. I'm pretty impressed. And standing in bird mode, he's about six and a half. You can see where a Decepticon symbol is supposed to eventually go. Those I'll probably put on. And apparently Dive Bomb does live a bit up to his name with the whole dive bombing thing. Because you assemble these guns and you can attach them to the sides and he can dive bomb and shoot people and all that wonderful stuff. Yay. Evil, evil Predacon. But all right, let's take these guns off, which can fall apart, and we'll put them aside for now. And robot mode, here we come. And there you have Dive Bomb in his robot mode. So far, not really complex transformations. Though getting these guns to stay together, that might be complex. Now, a lot of the original Predacons came with two guns and a sword. And so what I would usually do with Dive Bomb was put one gun in one hand, the sword in the other, and he had little screw holes, a little screw, screw hole on the side that would fit the other gun and I would just stick it like as a reserve blaster. But this guy doesn't have a sword, so he's okay. And there he is from all sides. Oh, you can apparently move the wings back in both modes, so you could have him flapping. So really up to you how you want to pose the wings. But he's got hella heels to keep him from uh, falling over backwards. So that's kind of nice. All right, dive bomb. Let's move on to Torox, AKA Tantrum. So he's got a big ass turd hang in here. I imagine that's part of the leg. But let's check him out in his animal mode. Now, the mouth doesn't seem to open, and I'm not gonna force it. Can turn it side to side, just like the original. The legs, not a heck of a lot you can do there. You can bend it at the knees, but he's just not gonna stand stably. But it does remind me a great deal of the original tantrum. And apparently you can put, just like the original, the foot on his back so he can be firing that while charging at somebody. I really didn't do that a lot when I was young. But one more spin on the turntable of doom and let's get him into his robot mode. So apparently in his robot mode, he's supposed to carry this huge cannon on his shoulder. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have him do that. But again, it's like a boom box that goes boom, boom. Yeah, that looks fucking terrible. But uh, again, I'm sure there's kits. I can get some guns for him. And he does have holes in his fists, which I assume are five millimeter. This guy is like eight and a quarter to eight and a half inches tall, somewhere around there. All right, let's do some uh, posability. He does have some ankle swivels. Not even sure if I checked the ankle swivels on uh, Dive Bomb, but he can go out quite a bit and he gets slippery on this. Yeah, Dive Bomb has them too. Not much. Sorry for not going in order. Oh well. Now, full toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme except he's got this big thing on his back, which you have to move out so that he can be like that. But it keeps him stable, as stable as he gets. 
So kicks forward, kicks back, though, you know, off to the side because that big thing on his back, the foreleg or the thigh, kicks to the side. He's got a pretty good knee bend, about 90 degrees. You can kind of swivel the leg, but not when it's pointed down. So off to the side, you can swivel it. If we bring this up, hey, you can twist them all the way around. Arms go all the way around, bends at the elbow, swivels, you can move the shoulders back, arms out to the side. A lot of posability there, the head all the way around. So very nice, very nice. He didn't have a big penis hanging off his shoulders. Okay, Look, looks like a really lame jetpack or judging by this, uh, could be like a pile driver. Are you trying to steal Rumble's stick? Not good. All right, enough with tantrum. Let's get Rampage in here. I can feel your pain. Let me deepen it. Now that's a totally different rampage. But there he is in his beast mode. The mouth does open, but the head doesn't seem to want to look up very much. These front legs can move around quite a bit. So the back legs, pretty much just these kind of little pathetic things. And I'd have to say his front paws are a little loose, but if you put him up on his toes, he kind of looks almost even. Now, apparently you can put this gun on his ass. So it's kind of like a tail gun. Don't come too close, Autobot, or I will fart. Ah, yeah, that would be uh, pretty hurtful. All right, so not a ton, again, in beast mode, but let us put him into his robot mode. All right, there is Rampage in his robot mode with his weapon and his really odd backpack. Looks similar to the original. His face seems kind of bland. It's all one color with just the uh, black eyes. Eyes black as death. All right, let's see here. Posability wise, he's got some ankle swivels that can help out. Yeah, can't really do a split or a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. He can kick forward and back. Not super high, but he can. Sidekick, if you use both legs, he can get it up there. He does twist all the way around at the waist, which is nice. Arms go all the way around, a little bit out to the side. You can move the shoulders up and down. Bends at the wrist. He's got a swivel, drops his gun, goes off, shoots Megatron in the foot. He gets killed. All right, head goes all the way around. Doesn't feel too loose, but doesn't feel as tight as some of the others. And that's pretty much it for posability, but again, equivalent if not a little bit better than the uh, original Rampage. All right, one more to go, and then you know what happens then. We end the video. No, we merge them into Predaking. I don't want to get killed. All right, here is Headstrong, who's a Rhino. Rhinox Maxim. No, wait, that's a totally different Rhino. And he's got some plastic on his head, probably to keep his horn from getting out of control, because he's a horny guy. And he's got the whole big thing. I know what that's for, pretty obvious, underneath his body. And again, you can take one of these and put it on his back. And you can do the shoulder thing. I'm not gonna even bother with this one because I think it looks stupid. But all right, let's check out the possibility as like a ranimal. These legs can kind of move a little bit. The front legs, not so much. You can turn the head, horn feels horny. Mouth doesn't seem to want to open, not gonna force it. So there he is. He looks very similar and similar playability to the original. All right, time for robot mode. I will say if you've got Tantrum or Torox's transformation down, then this guy is pretty much the same. So there he is from all sides. One thing I don't like about the legs about this guy and Tantrum is that basically you have this part here that the heel rests on. It doesn't really insert. Unless I'm missing something, it's just kind of there using gravity to hold it together. So regardless, still pretty good. And he does have some ankle swivels. Now, is he gonna be able to do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme? Pretty much. Again, you need to tilt this out or else he flops forward, but there he is, full Jean-Claude Van Damme. And he can kick forward though, not as high as you might hope. His foot can go out to the side, but again, not much. You lift that up, you can go all the way around. Pretty much you can expect the same posability as Tantrum. And the head, of course, spinning. All right, there are our Predacons. Now it's time to merge into Predaking. Oh, when you open up the chest of Razorclaw, you have the Matrix. Actually, it does kind of look like the Matrix. So there is this uh, Titan Master who has the power of the Predacons. It's called Onyx Prime. And uh, yeah, it does look like a Decepticon type Matrix. That's kind of cool. I'm putting it back in here, closing it up. I don't want to lose any Titan Masters to cats. First thing that happened is I take it out and it fell off the table. 
And I got couch right over there, waiting patiently for me to drop something else. All right, merging time. All right, there he is, Predaking. I have to say, the entire merge process, not exactly what I thought. Definitely different than any of the Combiner Wars guys. Very clever, and I have to say, the transformations on these guys, it's actually pretty clever as well, considering that they could have had Razor Claw and Rampage transform exactly the same way, but they didn't, and they kind of couldn't because of the extra pieces, but there he is, Predaking. Very, very impressive, 18 inches tall. I mean, Skylynx should be shitting himself trying to fight him. But yeah, a very cool bot. I'm not sure if I have the back exact. It just kind of said swing shit down, so I did, and I kind of like having these back plates protecting his kidneys or the Cybertronian equivalent. And he's actually pretty dang poseable. I mean, he's got ankle swivels. I mean, okay, you gotta be careful that you don't just pop out the entire goddamn thing. But if you're very careful, you can use the ankle swivels. I think he can even, but we lost a hand in the process, do a full toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme. I mean, that's impressive. It's irritating that he lost a hand. This isn't Star Wars. But yeah, I am pretty impressed with this. And I know the technology is a bit behind the time, so it's probably not quite as impressive as the uh, Legacy Minotaur, but still pretty poseable. I'm not going to go through the full thing, but he's also got the shoulder cannons, which were present in the G1 cartoon, but not so present in the actual toy. It's got a nice arm cannon, no sword, but uh, again, I'm sure there's add-on kits. And see in the back, they even fold in some of the, uh, the legs and such. Color me impressed, a very cool version of Predaking. And I will definitely have fun with him. He will go on my shelf with my regular Predaking and my Jolly Rancher Predakings and uh, my six in one Predaking. Uh, very cool. I will, of course, put links in the description. You might be able to find this. It's probably not going to be inexpensive on eBay, but I think he's worth it. He's pretty damn impressive. I just don't know about putting on all the goddamn stickers. But he is a fun guy, and I hope you're having fun watching these videos as much fun as I have showing these toys to you, even if they do frustrate me at times, and I curse and curse and curse, and you've not seen hardly enough cursing that I've done off camera. But I really like this guy, and definitely a predaking of pride. But while you're debating whether or not you want to get this particular predaking, there's another video over here, which is six predacons that merge into predaking. Very cool set. And if you're enjoying my content, please feel free to subscribe. But most of all, what I'd like you to do is have fun and good hunting.